So unless you've been living under a rock, you've most likely heard or read about vertical farming or at least the large number of vertical farming startups that suddenly went bankrupt in the last two years. We've made multiple videos about some of the main reasons for these bankruptcies, but regardless of the public discussion about this topic, it seems that the industry has not really learned its lessons. So let's go through some of the biggest mistakes that vertical farming startups keep making even to this day. Welcome to the world of vertical farming, where high-tech dreams often turn into financial nightmares. Despite the hype and investment, many vertical farming startups are crashing and burning. So why this once promising industry keeps tripping over the same hurdles over and over again? Let's find out. So imagine Sarah, a passionate entrepreneur with a vision to revolutionize urban farming. Inspired by the promise of cutting-edge technology, she dives headfirst into building a high-tech vertical farm. With the dreams of a state-of-the-art facility with automated systems for environmental controls, computer vision-aided growing, and robotic harvesting and packaging, she secures a massive venture capital investment to build a huge vertical farm right next to New York City. Sounds good? No. Bad idea. Many vertical farms, in their eagerness to establish a dominant presence in the market, often make the critical mistake of pouring just way too much capital into expansive and sophisticated farm setups right from the start. The temptation to use cutting-edge technology and state-of-the-art facilities with automated provocation, harvesting and packaging can be hard to resist for startup founders who are looking to raise investor money, especially because founders often assume that using Using fancy technology is the key to make one's business productive and efficient. However, what might look like a strategic advantage can actually quickly turn into a financial burden. So what you need to understand is that fully automated vertical farms or plant factories as they are called, they're incredibly expensive and complex to set up. So I recently got to interview Dan Nielsen, the head of strategy at Seasony, who told me that a fully decked out automated farm will easily cost you more than 2000 euros per square meter. So a 1000 square meter size farm, which by the way is about twice the area of a basketball court, would cost you about 2 million euros just to set up. And this is all before you even start the plant production and start paying for electricity, water, salaries and other operational costs. So based on this, I'm sure you can see how an oversized initial investment can strain your resources, especially in the early stages of the operation when revenue isn't really coming in. Talking of which, the next mistake that vertical farming startups are making is scaling their operations too quickly and hiring people like Alexi here in the background. <laughs> So jokes aside, the next mistake that vertical farming startups are actually still making is scaling their operations just way too quickly. So this mistake was a prominent problem with a number of successful vertical farming startups during the past five years or so. During the time of low interest rates or cheap investor money led to many startups to raise a lot of cash from big venture capital companies whose investment strategies often revolve around rapid scaling. You know move fast and break things. This, added with the rush to be first to the market, led to several unforeseen strategical mistakes and operational bottlenecks that the founders simply hadn't predicted. This slowed down their progress while investors were still breathing down their necks, asking for the next big launch. This, uh, the idea that vertical farms can be scaled like traditional Silicon Valley software startups, was one of the key failures for many of these firms. You have to understand that farming is hard, even without the robots and software in the mix. Add them to the pot and what you get is an expensive operation with a huge amount of entangled moving parts with a ton of different failure points. Without a solid foundation of streamlined processes and optimized workflows, rapid scaling can really overwhelm your resources and compromise product quality and customer satisfaction. And while you might, understandably, think that this is common sense, unfortunately, a lot of the early startups in this industry learned this the hard way. Anyways, successful scaling of a vertical farming business requires a meticulous approach that prioritizes operational readiness over the type of technology used. 
Farms must first establish robust systems for crop management, resource allocation, and workforce training. And by carefully monitoring production outputs, customer feedback, and market trends, vertical farm founders can identify the best moments for scaling up without sacrificing quality or efficiency. So this type of a step-by-step -step approach would not only ensure a more sustainable growth, but it would also enhance the farm's reputation for reliability. Unfortunately, vertical farms are still making the same mistakes and we are bound to see even more bankruptcies in the future. All right, so how do we fix this? Well, it's quite obvious that running a profitable vertical farm requires a balanced approach and it's crucial for farms to conduct thorough feasibility studies and start with scaled down versions to validate their business model and operational efficiencies before scaling up. By starting small and scaling gradually based on proven metrics, startups can mitigate financial risks and ensure a more sustainable growth rate. This approach not only conserves capital, but also allows for agile, 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 agile. This approach not only conserves capital, but also allows for agile adjustments in response to market changes and operational oopsies. Okay, so the third mistake that vertical farms keep making is automating a lot of unnecessary stuff. Sure, automation is a cornerstone of any modern vertical farming operation, and it can increase the farm's efficiency, reduce labor costs, and allow precise control over plant growing conditions. However, startup founders must be more strategic about the deployment of automation if they wish to avoid the pitfall of automating unnecessary tasks. In some cases, farms may invest heavily in automated systems that don't significantly enhance productivity or operational efficiency while simultaneously multiplying the cost of production. So it's basically like buying a self-driving lawnmower for a five foot by five foot patch of grass. Sure, it sounds really cool, but is it really necessary? The key to effective automation lies in identifying and prioritizing tasks that benefit most from technological intervention. For example, tasks such as nutrient delivery, climate control, and data analytics are prime candidates for automation as they streamline operations and improve crop yields. Conversely, tasks that require human judgment, such as crop monitoring and pest management, may be better suited to manual or a mixed intervention. Then there are tasks that would be much cheaper to do by automation, like harvesting and packaging. However, even if automating these tasks can drop the unit cost significantly, they are also some of the most expensive parts of any farm to automate. So by finding a balance between automation and human expertise, vertical farms do have the opportunity to optimize resource utilization while maintaining flexibility in response to evolving market demands. Talking of which, the next huge mistake that vertical farms have done and are still doing is choosing the wrong crops to grow. First, a lot of vertical farms have historically been competing with conventional agriculture by growing low-cost products like lettuce and basic herbs. Considering the initial investment that a vertical farm requires, added with the high operational costs, a lot of vertical farms simply never end up becoming profitable because the crops they've selected to grow will never pay back the costs of running the business. Choosing the right crops is indeed a key decision for vertical farms, influencing not only the yields and profitability, but also operational efficiency and market competitiveness. So while the temptation is to lean towards exotic or high-value crops like saffron, uh, wasabi, or difficult-to-grow berries, growing them is not the right choice for everyone. Instead, new founders must really take a holistic look at the markets they intend to serve, as well as the technology they are deploying, because this allows them to select crops that not only survive in a controlled indoor environment, but which also align with the consumer's preferences in the local market. So just make sure to conduct thorough market research and feasibility studies to assess the viability of the shortlisted crops. Focus on high demand crops with proven growth potential and also adopt a diverse crop portfolio to mitigate risks from seasonal fluctuations and market volatility. So talking of which, another mistake that many vertical farms do is that they start with too wide of a product portfolio, making it just too difficult to optimize the production. Some, on the other hand, are trying to master just one product at a time, maximizing its potential before moving to new products or markets. For example, this New York-based startup is making millions of dollars in annual revenue just by selling high-end strawberries. Click here to find out.